Hi guys. Sorry, I was just practicing my basketball skills. That's what I do when you're not here. Would you like to hear a story? Let me get my book. I'm gonna read you a story. Hey, you still there? I'm a little out of breath from all that basketball. Miss Phelps and I just played one-on-one. -on -one. I beat her, I beat her. I wanna share a story with you today that's called Stone Soup. And this book was written by Marsha Brown. And if you take a look at the cover, right here you'll see that there's a little silver medal on this book. And it says, it's a Caldecott winner. Hmm, any idea what that means? Well, anytime you see a book that has a silver or a gold medal on the front, you know it's a really good book because it's won a special award that's called the Caldecott Award. And that award is given to one book every year that is an especially wonderful children's book. And this book won the Caldecott Medal way back in 1947. Even I wasn't alive then. So I'm gonna share the story with you. And what we wanna be thinking about when we're reading this story is, what's the lesson that we could learn from this book? And when we're talking about reading, we call that the moral, M-O-R-A-L, the moral of the story. What is the lesson that we are trying to learn? So here's how this book begins. It says, three, I'll start again. Three soldiers trudged, walked, down a road in a strange country. They were on their way home from the wars. Besides being tired, they were hungry. In fact, they had eaten nothing for two days. How I would like a good dinner tonight, said the first, and a bed to sleep in, said the second. But all that is impossible, said the third. We must march on. On they marched. Suddenly ahead of them, they saw the lights of a village. Maybe we'll find a bite to eat there, said the first, and a loft to sleep in, said the second. No harm in asking, said the third. Now the peasants of that place feared strangers. When they heard that three soldiers were coming down the road, they talked amongst themselves. A peasant is like a... Um, a worker. Usually they were poor, they didn't have much, um, but these peasants are afraid of the soldiers. Here come three soldiers. Soldiers are always hungry, but we have little enough for ourselves. And they hurried to find their food, to hide their food. They pushed sacks of barley under the hay in the lofts, they lowered buckets of milk down the wells. They spread old quilts over the carrot bins. They hid their cabbages and potatoes under the beds. They hung their meat in the cellars, that's the basement. They hid all they had to eat. Then they waited. So why are they hiding their food? Because they are afraid the soldiers will take it because soldiers are always hungry. At least that's what they think. The soldiers stopped first at the house of Paul and Francois. Good evening to you, they said. Could you spare a bit of food for three hungry soldiers? We have no food for ourselves for three days, said Paul. Francois made a sad face. It has been a poor harvest. The three soldiers went on to the house of Albert and Louise. Could you spare a bit of food and have you some corner where we could sleep for the night? Oh no, said Albert. We gave it all we could spare to soldiers who came before you. Our beds are full, said Louise. Hmm. At Vincent and Marie's, the answer was the same. It has been a poor harvest and all the grain must be kept for seed. So it went all through the village. Not a peasant had any food to give away. They all had good reasons. One family had used the grain for feed. Another had an old sick father to take care of. All had too many mouths to fill.
Hmm. They don't want to share their food or their beds. The villagers stood in the street and sighed. They looked as hungry as they could. The three soldiers talked together. Then the first soldier called out, Good people! The peasants drew near. We are three hungry soldiers in a strange land. We have asked you for food, and you have no food. Well then, we'll have to make stone soup. The peasants stared. Stone soup? That would be something to know about. Stone soup, have you ever heard of that? First, we will need a large iron pot, the soldiers said. The peasants brought the largest pot they could find. How else to cook enough? That's none too large, said the soldiers, but it will do. And now water to fill it and a fire to heat it. It took many buckets of water to fill the pot. A fire was built on the village square and the pot was set to boil. And now, if you please, three round, smooth stones. Those were easy enough to find. The peasants' eyes grew round as they watched the soldiers drop the stones into the pot. Any soup needs salt and pepper, said the soldiers as they began to stir. Children ran to fetch salt and pepper. Stones like these generally make good soup, but oh, if there were carrots, it would be much better. Why, I think I have a carrot or two, said Francois, and off she ran. She came back with her apron full of carrots from the bin beneath the red quilt. It's a lot of carrots. A good stone soup should have cabbage, said the soldiers as they sliced the carrots into the pot but no use asking for what you don't have. I think I could find a cabbage somewhere, said Marie, and she hurried home. Back, she came with three cabbages from the cupboard under the bed. Mm. If only we had a bit of beef and a few potatoes, this soup would be good enough for a rich man's table. The peasants thought that over. They remembered their potatoes and sides of beef hanging in the cellars. They ran to fetch them. Fetch means get. A rich man's soup and all from a few stones. It seemed like magic. Do you see what's happening here? Ah, sighed the soldiers as they stirred in the beef and potatoes. If only we had a little barley and a cup of milk, this soup would be fit for the king himself. Indeed, he asked for just a soup when he dined with us, the peasants looked at each other. The soldiers had entertained the king. Well, but no use asking for what you don't have, the soldiers sighed. The peasants brought their barley from the lofts. They brought their milk from the wells. The soldiers stirred the barley and milk into the steaming broth while the, while the peasants stared. Hmm. At last, the soup was ready. All of you shall taste, said the soldiers, but first a table must be set. Great tables were placed in the square and all around were lighted torches. Getting ready to have a feast. Such a soup, how good it smelled, truly fit for a king. But then the peasants asked themselves, would not such a soup require bread and a roast and cider? Soon a banquet was spread and everyone sat down to eat. Never had there been such a feast. Never had the peasants tasted such soup and fancy made from stones. They ate and drank and ate and drank and after that they danced. They danced and sang far into the night. This turned into a party. At last, they were tired. Then three soldiers asked, 
Is there not a loft where we could sleep? Let three such wise and splendid gentlemen sleep in a loft? Indeed, they must have the best beds in the village. So the first soldier slept in the priest's house. The second soldier slept in the baker's house. And the third soldier slept in the mayor's house. So these were all very important people in the village. In the morning, the whole village gathered in the square to give them a send off. That means to say goodbye. Many thanks for what you have taught us, the peasant said to the soldiers. We shall never go hungry now, now that we know how to make soup from stones. Oh, it's all in the knowing how, said the soldiers, and off they went down the road. And then this over here says, such men don't grow on every bush. And then there they are walking down the road. So let's think about this story and what the lesson could be, what the moral of the story is. What would the author want us to learn from this story about the stone soup? We remember at the beginning that when the peasants realized that there were soldiers coming, they were afraid. They didn't like soldiers. So they hid all of their things. They hid their food. They said they didn't have anywhere for the soldiers to stay, but then, they ended up making a stone soup. And we know this, the stones really weren't the important part of the soup. What was the important part was that the people, the peasants in the village were sharing. So we might say that the moral of this story is that sharing is a good thing, or um, it's always a kind thing to share with others, or that sharing makes life better. So that's what a moral is. It's a lesson that we can learn from the story. It didn't come right out and say in Stone Soup that sharing was a good thing, but through the story we learned that they were able to have a feast and they were able to have a good time, have a party, because they all decided to share. They all decided to give. So again, that's what we call the lesson or the moral of the story. I hope that you enjoyed this and maybe you'll make some stone soup tonight.